Chapter 5. Stop, Challenge, and Choose. Here's an insight we've discovered over the years working with the ABC model. Just taking time to recognize when you're catastrophizing. Recognizing thoughts that start with either or, or should, can make a significant difference in how you think, how you feel, how you interact with people, and ultimately the results you get in work and life. And the ABC model can provide powerful insights in shaping your thinking. Yet, insight alone is often not enough to create the kind of personal changes we're talking about. And that's why we all need thinking tools. So here's your next one that we call Stop, Challenge, Choose. Thanks, Larry. Stop, Challenge, and Choose is a tool that can make the work of challenging irrational thinking and choosing more rational thoughts easier. Let's walk through how to use it, and then we'll go through an example. The first step is stop. When you feel an emotion that is not how you want to feel, for example, anger, fear, frustration, or sadness, that is your cue to stop. This is the common sense approach of counting to 10 before getting upset. If you can, disengage from the situation, walk away, give yourself time and space to regain your control. Now the problem is that often we can't just walk away, we can't hang up on a client or walk out of a meeting. In those situations, we need to stop and disengage mentally. That's the first step, stop. The next step, the heart of the process, is challenge. We want to challenge the thinking, interpretation, or belief that is causing the feeling. Here are some example challenge questions that we can ask ourselves. Is there a different interpretation of this event? Is there evidence that supports or negates my interpretation? Am I caught in one of the thinking traps? Thinking through the alternative interpretations, challenging irrational thinking, is the heart of the process because it creates options and then we can move on to the final step, choose. Focus on choosing a response based on what is objective, factual, and rational. Okay, here is an example of what we mean. Let's listen to Ellen go through the process. First, she stops and observes what she's feeling and why. Yeah, I guess I'm sort of anxious. I've got butterflies in my stomach and I am definitely having trouble staying focused. That's usually a dead giveaway that something is bugging me. You know what I think it is? This morning I had a session with this new client and it didn't go well. I'm pretty sure that's what's making me feel anxious. Next, Ellen takes a moment to challenge her initial thinking. Now wait a minute. I'm making up that the session didn't go well, but what is the evidence? Well, she didn't seem enthusiastic afterwards, and during the training she was kind of slow to catch on to what I wanted her to do. Now, it could be that she wasn't happy with me, but it also could be just a style thing. I can get pretty expressive and enthusiastic, and then I expect everyone else to be that way. Maybe she's just quieter than me, and maybe this kind of training is just new to her. I mean, she didn't say she wasn't coming back. I just assumed she wasn't coming back. Finally, after challenging her thinking, Ellen makes a choice in how to respond that is more rational and in her best interest. So maybe I shouldn't get upset until I find out what is really going on. Yeah, I should probably give her a call. Make sense? Stopping and breathing re-engages your brain so that you can think about what you were feeling and why. Then you can examine your thinking and challenge the interpretations that might be irrational. Then you can make more intelligent, rational choices. That's stop, challenge, and choose. Okay, now it's your turn. In your workbook, you'll find the Stop, Challenge, and Choose worksheet. There, we want you to practice the Stop, Challenge, and Choose skill with the stories provided. Good luck. One more chapter to go, and I'll see you later.